Hey there, Adrian Rosebrock here from PyimageSearch.com, and today we're going to have an introduction to convolutions. I love talking about convolutions because they appear to be like this big scary term to people new to computer vision and deep learning. Everyone's heard of convolutional neural networks and they tend to think, you know, what is this? What is this dark magic? What are they doing? Why do we use them? How do we apply them? And what's the role of convolutions in deep neural networks? The funny thing is that and as you go through this tutorial, you'll see that if you've ever opened a photo in like a photo processing application like Photoshop or GIMP or Microsoft Paint, and like you you like apply blurring, well, that's actually a convolution. There is a set of values that define this matrix, and you apply that to an input image, and that's actually what blurs the image. That's a form of convolution. There's other types of convolution as well. If you've gone through our like OpenCV 101 and 102 tutorials, and you've learned about image gradients, you've learned about the Sobel gradient operator, you've learned about the Char gradient operator, maybe even you've used the Laplacian operator before. All of those, also convolutions. The difference really between your traditional image processing operations like your Sobel and your Char, and then over here with convolutional neural networks, is that these over here, your char, your sobel, your blurring and smoothing, those are hand-defined kernels. Those are kernels that image processing researchers and developers have figured out that, yep, if I set these values just like that, then I'll get an output image here that looks blurred, or I'll get an output image here that has certain features sharpened. Or if I apply this operator, then I'll be able to get some image gradient and magnitude information out of the image. So those are hand-defined. In deep learning, though, we're actually learning those convolutional operators automatically with a deep neural network. And furthermore, when you learn them in like this hierarchy fashion that neural networks are formed in, well, then you learn these richer features. So like up here, like, you know, you can only learn your basic gradients. You can only learn basic edge detection. But down here, when you start stacking these automatically learned filters together, well, that, that is actually where the magic of deep learning lies, because you're learning these richer representations of data, and instead of just pulling out edges, you're learning these high-level features of like, oh, that's a cat's face over there, or that's a hubcap of a tire. And that's all done through this hierarchy learning. But it all starts with convolution. And it's, it sounds like a scary operation, but really, it's not. In reality, it's just an element-wise multiplication of two matrices followed by a sum. So you take two matrices, which both have the same width and height, you multiply them element by element, so not the dot product, just a simple multiplication. So to show you what that looks like, if I open up NumPy, oops, that was a typo. So let's say, let's create two matrices, zero to nine, and we'll reshape them to be three by three. And let's create another one, also three by three, same values. So here's B. As you can see, A and B are the same. So if I do A, I'll multiply them element-wise. That gets you these values. Zero times zero is obviously zero. One times one is one. Two times two equals four. Three times three equals nine, and so on. So that's what the element-wise is, as opposed to taking like your dot product, something like that, which is very, very different. So we're doing an element-wise multiplication, and then we're going to sum all the output values here. So these nine values will be summed together. It's literally what it is. This is literally convolution. Congratulations, you've literally just applied convolution by taking two matrices, multiplying them element-wise, summing the result. If you want to be technical, this is actually cross-correlation. There's a difference between convolution and cross-correlation mathematically. I'm not going to go into detail, into super um, rigorous detail about that. You can read the tutorial here if you want more detail, but in deep learning literature and deep learning applications, when they're talking about convolution, most of the time they're talking about cross-correlation. It is element-wise multiplication followed by a sum. So what we're gonna do in this tutorial is we're gonna learn how to apply convolution manually. Sure, OpenCV provides us with functions to apply these kernels, but we want a deeper understanding of what these convolutions and filters are actually doing, because later we're going to go into a much more detailed representation of this concept. 
Okay, so now that we understand just the higher level what convolutions are doing, we're gonna start looking at how to actually implement them using OpenCV and Python. And later, once we start getting deeper into this course, you're gonna learn how to apply deep learning to actually train models to learn these filters automatically. I keep stressing the point about deep learning up here in the introduction for a reason, because I want to help solidify in your head that, yeah, convolutions are super, super powerful tools, but there is a difference between the hand-defined convolutions in image processing and then the automatically learned convolutions within convolutional neural networks. 